Hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Flowmotion because today I'm going to show you how you can nest one clip in another one. So just follow me into After Effects. And in here I have a surprise for you, because I'm not only going to show you how to create this shot, but also how to use this technique to create cool cinematic shots. So therefore I will show you some different workflows and tell you when to use which one. And while you watch those examples and also some shots I've been supervising and working on, I can tell you that if you have any questions about this tutorial or After Effects or Visual Effects or about cameras, equipment and so on, you can leave me a comment down below and I promise I will answer each one. And as an extra bonus, if you make it through this video, I have created a super cool compositing trick for you at the end of today's lesson. And speaking of today's lesson, I want to show you how to nest one clip into another one. And this is a really common type of shot, as you only need to build parts of the set that you actually see in the final shot. And in my example that would be the door. And this particular one I found in Slovenia. But anyways, this means you can shoot something with real interaction, in my case me opening and closing the door. But everything that you don't touch can be added in post-production. And you don't even need a green screen for that. So best is to shoot this shot from a tripod, so you don't have to create a complicated roto. But let me quickly show you how that can be fixed, because I also shot my door handheld. So simply apply the warp stabilizer effect to the footage and for the result you choose no motion and let it do its thing. And boom, we have a complete fixed shot. Perfect. So let's quickly pre-compose it by going over to layer, pre-compose or use the shortcut Control, Shift and C and call it door. And now I only have to cut out one frame by going to the pen tool over here or simply hit G on the keyboard and draw a mask around the door and that's it. So now we have created an asset that you can put in each scene that you want. Just keep in mind that you have some limitations. For example, in this case, as I filmed this pretty straight onto the door, I have to make sure that I have the same perspective in the shot where I want to nest it in. So I have a rule of thumbs for that, to only offset it by around 5 degrees in the different axes. But again, this is up to your shot, as you may get away with some more offset if you are further away, for example. So let's bring out the first background clip we want to use for the nesting. I filmed that one with an iPhone because of two reasons. First, in that playroom I was able to get through all the toys way easier. And second, I simply didn't have another camera. And here I took care to also have something overlapping, in this case the head of the horse, as this will make it look even more convincing. And I'm also going to show you a cool method of rotoing this out with Mocha in just a few minutes. But at first we need to track our background, so that we can apply the movement also to our door. And there are actually two ways of doing that. And this is also why I created two shots, because I wanted to show you both ways. 2D tracking and 3D tracking. And let's actually start with the 3D tracking, as I have used that for the playroom. So all we need to do is search for the effect called 3D Camera Tracker. Or simply right click on the footage, go to Track and Stabilize and choose Track Camera. And both ways apply the exact same effect to the footage. And when you apply it to the footage, it automatically starts to analyze it. But a good option is always to go into the advanced settings and enable detailed analysis. And the cool thing about this effect is that you also get a time indicator on how long this will take. And it also switches to percentages. Really handy, because you can work on the rest of the effect while it is analyzing. So you can even hide that warning banner here, so you are not distracted while working. But I would actually recommend to leave it on, so you see that there is something happening. 
and when it has finished to analyze, it will start to solve the camera, which means it tries to figure out the exact camera position and movement in 3D space. And for a shot where only the camera moves and nothing within the frame, this should work perfect. So as an indicator you get those colored crosses, and crosses that are further away appear smaller, as they are already situated in 3D space. And now I like to go to a point in time where the inserted footage will be visible the most. And this is about here. And as I want to place the door on this wall, I watch out for points that are on that wall. And by clicking on them while holding down control, I can create an average of them. So, in general, the more correct points, the better. And also the more they are apart from each other, the better the result. So just think of this plane as the top part of a table. So two legs, or in this case two tracking points, are pretty instable. Three legs would be better, but if you have a large tabletop it will also make sense to spread the legs to the edge of the tabletop. And four or five legs make the table more stable. So, now as we have that, let's right click on one of the track points and create our tabletop or in this case a layer in 3D space as well as a camera. And when we scrub through the clip now, you see that our layer sticks to the position of the wall in 3D space. So that is super cool and when you think back, it was also super easy. Now let's also turn our door composition into a 3D layer by hitting that 3D cube icon over here. And simply click on the transform settings of the layer and copy and paste it onto our composition. Now the door is in the perfect depth position. So we do not want to change anything to the Z position, but we can move it up, down, left, right and also scale or rotate it. And the new 3D cursors for the axis and rotation make this super handy and super easy. And I'm pretty happy with the position here, so let's RAM preview this. Yeah, looking really great. So if you have enjoyed the tutorial so far, but are also pretty curious on how to bring this to a final stage with some color correction and some relighting, then you should think about hitting the subscribe button. Because the more subscribers I get, the more time and effort I can bring into these tutorials for you. And I really love doing those tutorials. But now let's jump to a super awesome feature within After Effects that is a huge time saver and not many people are aware of this. So for most of the shots I use a levels effect, a hue and saturation as well as the Lumetri color effect. So now I am applying all of them to the door layer. I can select all of them by holding down control and with all of them selected I simply go to animation, save animation preset and save them as flow CC for color correction. So the next time I need to do a color correction, I can simply go to the effects and presets and search for flow CC, apply it and all effects are there. So you can also tweak the effects and save them if you have created a specific look. But now let's at first work on the black and white point of the door. And I always like to do that with the levels effect. So the way I normally do this is to bring up the exposure until the white starts clipping. And then I bring the sliders to the point where the white starts to clip. And then I do the same for the blacks, therefore I bring up the exposure. And once this is set I have a look at the white balance of the door to match it to the playroom. As I was not able to set the white balance on the smartphone. So you get a cooler temperature when you go negative and it gets warmer in the positive direction. And for the hue and saturation I'm just trying to find a good value so that it matches to the smartphone footage of the playroom. And you can also go into the specific colors and set them individually. And while we're at it, let's also apply a really cool effect called change color, because I found that the playhouse has all these really saturated dark red colors. So let's try to change the color of the door into that direction. 
With the color picker, we can click on the red or brown tones of the door and now we can use the U, Lightness and Saturation transform to match the color. And as this can get a little noisy here, we can also play with the softness just a little bit. And let's directly add another effect that you maybe would not use that often. CC Plastic. This is a really fun effect because you can define a bump layer. And in this case it is the same door composition. And this creates highlights and shadows in a way plastic would look. That means there are now more highlights on the wood, for example. Because if the door would be made out of plastic, you would get highlights. So in this case this effect really helps. Okay, now before we start with the roto part of this in Mocha, I want to give you a quick tip on how to integrate this even better. And this is with adding fake shadows to your composition. So I'm creating a new solid and with the color picker I'm looking for the darkest part in the image. And now I'm also going to copy the position of the 3D composition to that black layer. And therefore I have to also turn it into a 3D layer of course. And you see that nice shadow on the house? So let's simply create a mask in that shape and let's feather it to mimic the fall off of the real shadow. And also play with your transparency by hitting T for opacity. And this really makes the difference. Absolutely perfect. And so, as a last step for this first shot, because remember, I will also show you how to set this up with a 2D track on a second shot. So I am also going to roto out the head of the horse now, as promised in Mocha. And therefore let's duplicate the background layer and call it horse. And by dragging in the start and end, I can define the area where I need to do the roto, which is of course the time where the horse is covering the door. And now I can pre-compose it by hitting Ctrl, Shift and C again and call it roto. Make sure to move all attributes into the new composition and also enable adjust composition duration to the time span of the selected layer. In this way we have a composition with the matching duration. Now let's apply the Mocha effect to it. So search for Mocha AE, drag it onto the Rotocomp and click on the Mocha logo. This will automatically open up Mocha for you. And in here this is super simple. Just create a shape around the head of the horse. And when you click and drag on those handles here, they will get curved. And once you are happy with the shape, hit the track button over here. And in this case backwards, because it makes most sense to start with the roto where you can see the head best. Now just watch out for the shape and when it starts drifting, simply adjust those points. And you can also adjust more than just one point at once. And this should be pretty fast and a thousand times faster than typical roto within After Effects. Once it is done we call our layer Horse. Hit Save and Close Mocha. And on the Mocha effect in After Effects on the matte settings click on Apply Matte and we are done. And over here you can also feather the mask. And as a bonus tip you can also click on Create AE Masks and this will create a mask for you with all the keyframes on each frame if you want to fine tweak it. But remember you can also always go back into Mocha and fine tweak it here. So now let's watch our final result. And I really love how the horse head makes this look way more advanced than it actually is. Okay, we can call this one done, but as promised I will also show you how you do the 2D version of this. So let's drag and drop this drone shot onto the new composition icon and I have already prepared the door as a separate asset. Which means I have simply rendered it out with an alpha channel so that we can continue a bit faster. And as before I'm going to the point in time where I see most of the part that I want to use. And in this case it is the end of the clip. So let's rescale the door and maybe also mask out the top part as I've done in my example. And now let's pre-compose it because it is really important. And by really important I mean really, really important. It is really important that the clip we want to nest has the same dimensions as the background. And at the moment you see that this does not match because we have scaled it down. So let's pre-compose this and call it nest. 
Now let's again search for the Mocha effect. Drag and drop it onto the footage and click on the Mocha logo. And here, as we have matched everything in After Effects on the last frame, let's do the same thing in Mocha. We go to the last frame and again create a shape, this time a rectangle around the part where our door will later on be. And I'm going to fine tweak this a little bit so it really sits flat on the wall. Because remember, we are tracking a planar surface now and not as before a 3D scene. And again we track this shot backwards. And look at this, isn't it amazing? Mocha somehow managed to track it until the very end without any further adjustment. Absolutely mind-blowing. And Remember how we pre-comped the door at the last frame to be full frame? So let's do the same thing in Mocha. We go to the last frame and click on that planar surface icon. And now we see what we have tracked. But we want this area also to cover the full frame. And this is exactly what the button next to this does. So now as we have done this, we can again name our layer to wall track, save it and we can close it again. And back in After Effects we can now simply apply our tracking data and this is again super easy. Click on Create Tracking Data and your wall track layer should already be selected. And for the export option you can now choose between corner pin and corner pin with motion blur. And for a little bit more of realism I will go for motion blur. So the last thing we have to define is where to apply it to. And of course we will choose our nest layer and we finally hit apply. And when we play this back we already have a pretty nice result. And now for the color correction we do it as before. And remember we can now simply type in flow cc and we have everything we need. But I really don't have to change that much here as both of them were shot outdoors in somehow the same light settings. But one thing I will do is to keyframe the blacks in the levels effect because the further you are away from an object the less black values it has. And you can see that pretty easy if you take a picture with a lot of depth like for example this one. If you now bring up the exposure you see that it starts clipping where it is furthest away from the camera. So it's almost like a depth mat. And this is because the closer the image is to the camera, the more blacks it has. So this is a powerful tip for compositing. And here is a quick example. So this is a background layer where you can see kilometers or miles into the distance. And there is three times the door. In the foreground, the midground and the background. And at the moment they all have the same black output amount. And for the foreground I may leave it like it is, but in the midground I will already take out almost a quarter of it. And in the background I would maybe take out half or even more of the black level. And you see, this is already starting to look way better and we have only used one slider for all of this. And back in the drone shot this is exactly what you can animate here over time. But why haven't I done that to the toy room shot? Hmm. Well, by now you already know it. This shot only has a depth of a few meters, so the black level change can almost not be seen by our eyes. And this is already the end of this tutorial. So I really hope you learned something with me today about nesting shots and about compositing in general. And hey, if you did, then feel free to subscribe to my channel because in that way I can do way more of those tutorials for you. And guess what? I really love doing those tutorials. But for now I wish you a lot of fun nesting yourself into shots in After Effects. Yeah.